and good evening, everyone. It is me, Natalie Cousins. I trust that you are having an awesome and amazing evening. Guess what? It is auto suggestion night, and it is chapter. Uh, well, let's look and see. It is. Uh, we're on wave six, and it's chapter four, which is the third step towards riches. And so, I'd love for you guys all to go ahead and get out your PDF guides to success. And if you don't actually have that yet, um, you're going to want to follow along. Um, and you, you're able to actually order your copy of the PDF Guide to Success online. You'll go to www.pdfguidetosuccess.com and there you'll be able to get your copy and it will be uh, emailed to you once the purchase has been made. And so it is so important tonight uh, for us to understand what exactly it is that we need to know about auto-suggestion and understand why we actually do auto-suggestions. And so this has been coming up a lot and it's it's been coming up a lot because a lot of people um, have been having a little bit of um, struggles with the repetition, uh, struggles with different things going on. And so it's going to be super important that we understand how to use auto-suggestion and the actual importance of it. And so if you've actually watched um, the, the, or when you actually watch, if you haven't already watched, uh, Lester's um, review or rest, Lester's reading of the chapter, you will hear him talk about, you know, deletion. Um, and, and, and whenever he's trying to drown something out of his um, uh, subconscious, he keeps on saying delete, delete, delete. Excuse me. And this is uber important because we look at the subconscious mind and we want to start thinking of kind of how we do spring cleaning. The only difference with clearing out the subconscious mind is we don't have to wait until a specific time to do it. We can do it at any given time. And I'm going to give you some examples of that tonight. Uh, I do want to thank my co-partners for going ahead and reading the chapters for us, uh, Lester Bailey, Patricia Lynn Stokes, as well as Gordon. So for all the contributions that they do for the group. And so the whole purpose of this is to specifically use the roadmap that we're given to 1000% correct anything that is negative that is being stored in the subconscious. And so right away, I want you to get your pens and papers. We are going to dive right in. And so the actual performance of transmuting desire into money involves the use of auto-suggestion as an agency by which one may reach and influence the subconscious mind. And so auto-suggestion is a self-suggestion. Communicate the object of your desire directly into your subconscious mind in a spirit of absolute faith, which we talked about how to increase faith yesterday. Through repetition of this procedure, you voluntarily create thoughts of habits which are favorable to your efforts to transmute desire into its monetary equivalent. Uh, you are now reading this chapter, which represents the key to the arch of this philosophy and the instructions contained in this chapter must be understood and applied with persistence. And if you succeed in transmitting, uh, what will happen is your desire will become in, will turn into money. And so at the end of the day, I wanted to break down the word auto-suggestion and, and show you that different words have different meanings. And so obviously auto-suggestion is the hypnotic or subconscious adaption of an idea that one has originated oneself. Um, it could be through repetition of verbal statements to oneself in order to change behavior. And so I was listening to Bob, Bob Proctor yesterday, and he has a two-hour um, recording that just keeps on repeating the same thing over and over again. And so I thought about that, and I was like, you know, my uh, desire statement um, can be recorded and I can just go and put it into something that will continuously have it on repeat or I can upload it to my iTunes account 
and I can have it play in my library continuously on repeat. And so I think that if anyone is struggling, I, I, so here's the thing. Somebody did reach out to me and said, look, I can't say my auto suggestions because at the end of the day, my uh, spouse doesn't believe in this crap. And so I said, oh my God, you can't be calling it crap because if you call it crap, then the subconscious holds on to that and isn't want to be isn't going to want to be able to um, give you what you're looking for. So correct your steps on that. And so your husband might call it crap, but it's the greatest gift to you. And so I said to her, just record it and have it um, play for yourself in the morning instead of him actually hearing it. Um, and checked up, checked on her a couple of weeks later, and she said that was probably the best thing or the best advice that I could have ever given her. That being said, um, as I was speaking with Lester, and after he, you know, talked about the whole delete, 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 I went back and I said to her, you know, this thing that your husband is calling crap, please go ahead and just start saying delete, delete, delete every time you think about it, because at the end of the day. If it's stored there, nothing that you're saying or nothing that you're playing will help you. And so auto-suggestion, it, it's broken down. And at the end of auto-suggestion, it ends in um, gestion, okay? Gestion is French for management, okay? Gestion is French, is the French word for, is the French word for the word management, and so at the end of the day, guys, we are trying to manage what it is that we are feeding our brain and what it is that we are saying to our brain. And so at the end of the day, we're managing everything that comes in and managing everything that goes out. And so when we look at the word management, okay, because manage is man, age, and meant. That's how that word is broken down. And so what ends up happening with the brain is these are things that are stored in the subconscious that have aged over time. And it's meant to stay there because it's like the uh, brain of the computer. It's like the memory of the computers, right? So we have to manage delete, delete, delete to get it out to make room for all these new repetitions that we are going to do. And so all this week I've been saying one plus one is two, two plus two equals four. Those are, those are repetition of mathematics. And it, it, all it is is the plus is what's positive, And you can just see it multiplying, 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 multiplying. And what we are doing is as we rise higher, the negative goes out. The negative goes out. And so with auto-suggestions being a repetition, okay, of verbal statements to oneself, it is going to change our behavior. And that's why gestation is at the end because it's managing this whole thing if you follow what it is that I'm saying. And so the subconscious mind needs to be able to have a technique that is um, a developed effect um, or therapy to beat it out. And so at the end of the day, guys, we need to be able to delete, okay? And when we delete something, what that is doing for our brain is we're removing uh, anything that might be written in our DNA, okay? We are, we are deleting anything uh, that might have been there, which was causing erratic behavior, uh, self-esteem issues, confidence issues. We have to delete, delete, delete. And so in this book, it talks about dominating thoughts and it talks about guarding your thoughts. And so there's a perfect ex example in here where it says here, understanding the, the subconscious mind, and there are two things that you have to do. So the first one we're going to talk about is the dominating thoughts. And it says, through dominating thoughts, which one permits to remain in the conscious mind, whether these be negative or positive, is immaterial. The principle of auto-suggestion, voluntary reaches the subconscious mind and influences it with these thoughts. So what I mean to say by that is I've said before that we can have physical um, abuse, which I do not condone at all, right? But if you have physical abuse and you have verbal abuse, the verbal abuse will last a lifetime versus the physical abuse. Because here's the thing, unless the physical abuse left a scar, 
you won't remember the physical. But if the person said, you'll never amount to nothing, you're never going to be anything, you'll never be rich, you'll never have money, uh, you're stupid, all of these negative things that have been uh, being repeated to you from a child growing up, the subconscious has stored it like the uh, computer has a, a hard drive that has memory, right? And so we talk about memory and we talk about all these things that the subconscious mind holds on to. Those for all your life have become dominating thoughts. And so in order to, here's the thing, guys. The one thing that someone can tell me is that I can't do something. And the minute that they tell me that I can't do something, because all my life I was not able to do something, if I wanted a glass of water, I had to ask for it. If I wanted the Skittles on top of the fridge, I had to ask for it. So any time as an adult that someone told me I couldn't do something, and I'm going to give you an example, <coughs> excuse me, of what I mean in a minute, um, I specifically would challenge that adult. I would specifically challenge that adult and show them that I can. And, and a perfect example of that is I remember being, I think, 19 or 20 years old, building my first uh, website. And I remember the gentleman telling me, you know, um, he wanted like $1,500 to build this website for me. And um, at the end of the day, when he built this, when he was telling me the price of this, I was like, here I am starting my interior design business. I don't have two pennies to rub and I definitely don't have $1,500 to give you for a website. And so I started to research coding. I started to research all these things. And I built my very first website by myself. I have been in a self-employed individual probably since 1999, 2000, um, legally registered 2003, 4. Can you believe that every website that I've ever owned, I have built? I have never paid somebody to build a website for me. And this all comes from dominating thoughts. We need to start really taking an inventory of some of the things that we have been through and be able to use it as strengths. And thank you, Marcus, for that compliment. I really appreciate it. And so at the end of the day, we really need to look at some of the things that happen in our lives and figure out how we can use that to fuel ourselves to greater. All my life as a kid, I got told you can't, I used to physically take a, a notebook and write and practice practice cursive and try to write out my feelings. And I got told by my aunt, put the pen and paper away. You can't write. You cannot write. If I wanted water, I had to ask for it. And if I was thirsty and wanted it, they would say, no, you've just eaten no water. All my life, I've been confined to somebody telling me what it is that I had to do. And so as soon as 18 and 19 hit, I was like, okay, I'm an adult now. I'm going to do what I have to do. So when this gentleman told me I would never be able to build this website for myself, he challenged me and I did it. And I thank him for that because I've never paid for web development. And so your dominating thoughts are so powerful. And so I say to the person today who has been verbally or physically abused, you have the power to delete, delete, delete. You have the power within you to manage all of these negative sabotaging things that have been played out in your mind to the child who got beaten and who, who was told that they can't do something to the child who was told that they'll never amount to anything. You can fight that with the power of your dominating thoughts. And how are you going to do that? Here it goes again. The power of repetition. Repeat, 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 repeat. The more that you drown out the old thoughts and invict and inject the current thoughts that you want by saying, I will trust and believe in the power of my desire statement. And if you repeat this desire statement twice a day for 365 days, can you only imagine the power that these statements have that at some point in time, someone is going to be like, okay, what is this girl or this guy on? because they are just so egotistical that at the end of the day, they feel as if they are going to win. And guess what? You are going to win because I don't need for a neighbor to tell me that I'm going to win. I don't need for somebody else to tell me that I'm going to win. I 
set my life. I set my standards and I am full of infinite possibilities. And so at the end of the day, we also need to guard our thoughts, which is number two. It says here, all sense impressions which are perceived through the five senses are stopped by the conscious thinking mind and may be either passed on to the subconscious mind or rejected at will, okay? The conscious faculty serves, therefore, as an outer guard to the approach to the subconscious. Nature has so built man that he has absolute no control over the material which reaches his subconscious mind through his five senses, okay? Though this is not meant to be constructed as a statement that man always exercises this control, in the great majority of instances, he does not exercise it, which explains why so many people go through life in poverty. Mindset. Mindset. Limited conditions. And you, you start to get swallowed up by the people around you. Did you know that somebody else will be in an environment and you'll look at them and you'll see the glow on them. And then, you know, we're always told to hang around like-minded individuals, like-minded. You know that I don't want to just look at you for who you present yourself to be just online. I've got to get to know you. I've got to be able to see your personality when the lights are off and the cameras are off. I want to get to know you on a one-on-one -on -one conversation to see if I jive with you, if my vibes go with you. Because at the end of the day, guys, you can, you can be sucked right into an environment and not even know it. And it's, it, it, it may be a form of hypnosis, but at the end of the day, when you don't guard your thoughts, when you don't guard your thoughts, it is so easy for somebody else to come in and take control and tell you, this is what you should do. I think this is what you, you should do. And because you don't have dominating thoughts, that person's thoughts and things that they think should be for you is what takes over you. And all of a sudden, you are mesmerizing what they think you should do because of your lack of self-confidence, your lack of dominating thoughts, your lack of your own auto-suggestions that you fall and succumb to what they want for you. And it's just a trance for that moment. And when all that shiny object syndrome starts to wear off and they've moved on to their next victim, you're back at square one. And what are you saying to yourself? It's, I'm bad luck. I just don't, I just, it's generational curses. It's all this stuff. No, honey, it is you because you have not guarded your thoughts. You don't know who you are. You didn't know that you were full of infinite possibilities. You didn't know that you could have established this business and grew it. And you didn't need anyone to join the team because as you start to get in alignment with your assignment, the right people come into your circle. You understand what it is that I'm saying, and I'm getting very emotional because I used to be the person that I would always try to fit people into a position to come and work with me. Now, everything that I'm doing, the right people just fall in at the right time. And it says in the auto suggestion that we that we said yesterday, I will fully, I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless built upon truth and justice. Therefore, I will engage in no transaction which does not benefit all of whom it affects, all of whom it affects. I will succeed by attracting to myself the forces which I will use with the cooperation of other people. Because no man is an island and there is no I the word team. I will induce others to serve me because of my willingness to serve others. It's clearly written here. So why is it that we are struggling with this thing? Why is it that we just can't get it together? Why is it that we keep on saying nothing's working for us? Right? This is wave six, guys. It is wave six. It means we've read this book six times in six months. Can you understand the powerfulness of this? And I can tell you right now, there are tons of you who have been here from day one who still haven't gotten it together when we've provided you the tools and the resources to be able to set yourself up, right? Set yourself up. And so you keep saying to yourself that things are not working. It's you that's not working because you don't want to actually take the time to sit down and put the pen to paper to do what it is that you are supposed to do. 
And so I ask you, why? Why? And so it says here, dominating thoughts. What are three dominating thoughts that you carry with you day by day? And so the old me, the dominating thoughts that I would carry was I was never going to make it and that I would have no money and that I could not be successful. These were dominating thoughts that I used to carry in my mind all the time. And don't get me wrong, I still have dominating thoughts from time to time, but I have learned through auto suggestion and repetition of my affirmations and the visuals that I have placed in front of myself to be able to counteract the devil that's coming in and trying to stop my show. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not trying to stop my show. I've got a long way to go. All right. And so guarding your thoughts, what thoughts, thoughts and benefits do your friends or relatives or acquaintances or your community or your nation hold that you need to guard against? And I'm going to give you guys some very good examples. So Somebody might say to you, like, life is limited. There's not enough money to go around. Um, be happy with you ha with what you have and don't ask for more. I had a friend who told me I would never be able to be a successful entrepreneur, being a mother and running a business. It just wouldn't work. And I listened to that person because I didn't guard my thoughts, okay? And because I didn't guard my thoughts, I allowed that individual to come in and rent space into my head. And after all, what had ended up happening was I shut my whole operation down. Here I was, 25 years old, expecting my first child. I had one of the biggest design firms upcoming working with the top builders in Toronto. And I allowed an individual, because I didn't know my, my, my dominating thoughts, I didn't guide my thoughts, and I had this person shut me down. Shut me down just by one conversation and i didn't learn once from that person i didn't learn twice from that person and i didn't learn three times from that person but i'm going to tell you the last time that i didn't follow my six senses and i allowed this person to rent space in my life again that was all i needed to say enough of this person and completely be rid of them and so guys we need to start paying attention what we used to do we do no more Okay, a lot of people are waiting for the new year to hit. A lot of people are trying to come up with these new year's resolutions and all these things. They don't work if you don't work. They don't work if you don't work. And all it is is it's just, again, that smoke and mirrors crap that we're all interested in that the society has to offer us again, okay, to tell us it's the new year, new year's resolution, get a gym membership do this, do that. It's all a bunch of crap if you don't decide to do it. And here's the thing, because we're not guarding our thoughts, we're allowing these commercials to come into our head because we're not guarding our thoughts. We're allowing ourselves to go spend money on these gym memberships that we're never going to use unless we decide that we're going to use it, right? All of it is broken habits, broken habits. They're, they're repeated broken habits and we need to break them and shake them off. How are we going to do that? With the auto suggestions. Everyone's auto-suggestion is going to be different. But at the end of the day, remember, thoughts become things. And if thoughts become things, it specifically says, whatever the mind can believe, the mind can achieve. And so what are you looking to achieve today? It clearly says here, man may become a master of himself and of his environment because he has the power to influence his own subconscious mind and through it gain the cooperation of infinite intelligence. And so I'm here to tell you guys, we can do this rodeo, wave seven. We can do this rodeo, wave eight. Check it. Wave eight, I will be so high up. You should be so high up. We should all be floating in a paradigm shift so strong that when we align with our assignments, we're all up there. And I don't, I, listen, they say, see you at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. But I want to see you guys rising and propelling and going up into higher spirits and higher thoughts because you are in alignment with who it is that you want to be. You are in alignment with your assignment. You're dedicated and you are winning, winning because you have said these auto suggestions day in and day out as your dominating thoughts. So your thoughts become guarded. So when an opportunity comes your way, you will be able to know, if it fits with your mastermind, if it fits with what you've set out to do, if it fits with your goals and with your visions. 
And it's an easy and simple decision rather than wasting half the year doing something that you didn't even know how you physically got into that mess because you didn't sit down and evaluate where it is that you wanted to go and where it is that you wanted to be. And it, it talks here about the rich garden of your mind. And it says, the subconscious mind resembles a fertile garden spot in which weeds will grow in abundance if the seeds are more desirable crops, if the seeds of more desirable crops are not sown therein. Auto-suggestion is the agency of control through which an individual may voluntarily feed his subconscious mind on thoughts of creative nature or by neglect permit thoughts of a destructive nature to find their way into this rich garden of the mind. And so as we are reading Think and Grow Rich, as we are trying to get out all of the old things by delete, 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 guess what happens? Somewhere like the snake in the tree, it will creep up and it will start to tell you, girl or boy, what are you doing? That auto-suggestion crap don't work. Put it down. This is the little, the little voice in your head. Or it could be somebody in your household who thinks that you're talking a bunch of crap. But you got to delete, delete, delete. You got to go back and you got to continuously have your thoughts guarded. Have your dominating thoughts. If, it, if two days out of two times a day doesn't work for your desire statement, do it three times a day. Record yourself one and put it on repeat. Drown out the naysayers. Drag out, draw, uh, dr block out, repel the negative people. Get out of the negative space. Get out of the negative energy and focus, focus, focus on what it is that you want. And guys, I'm not preaching to the choir here. I have once been that person who a few years ago, if you asked me something, let alone a few months ago, if you asked me something, I always had a negative contradiction for it. Like, why do that? Why this? Why that? But as I started to condition my mind with my auto suggestions, as I start to have these repetitive behaviors, prayers, meditation, auto suggestions, affirmative statements, I am statements, all of these things that I'm doing to condition my mind for greatness, it, it, the proof is in the pudding. It shows, right? You got to be the product of the product. You got to be the product of the product. You cannot be telling people you have read Think and Grow Rich six times and you're still in the same place. No elevation. Too much reading, not enough absorbing, and not enough of applying the principles that we need in order to stay alive and become the person that we really want to be. And that's basically it. It talks about weeding your garden. What are three destructive thoughts in your mental garden that you would like to uproot today? And examples are, I've tried but I failed before. It's too hard. I don't have enough money. It's too much work. And I, this too much work is for all of the real estate agents in here who have specifically said that they want help, specifically said that they want coaching. But when you look at all those lists of things that you've got to do, you throw in the towel because you're like, it's too much work, right? Think about it. Like when I think about uh, God, God was a carpenter. There are a few other people in the Bible, even as they ministered, they still had to go to their job. They still had to do what it was that they had to do, right? And so why can't we still do what we have to do in the meantime, between time, as we're building our empire, right? I want to be the world's number one female coach. I want to own and sell massive pockets of real estate in the industry. I can't put down one for the other. I also want to continue to help in men and women personally grow with their personal development, right? Does it mean I put down one over the other? I'm going to do all of the things that I have to do day in and day out to keep in alignment with my assignment to get where it is that I need to go. I, I even put in my affirmative statement that even after I've attained the money that I desire, I'm still going to continue to do my plan, right? Guys, we have to focus on these words and, and the actions and the things behind it, right? the actions and the things behind it. We cannot be on wave six and your desire statements are still blank. 
you don't have any affirmative statements, you're reading it once every couple of weeks because you think you can pop up shop like Drake and Garth Brooks and whoever else, listen, they've already done what they need to do. They've already planted their seeds. I know I want to surpass him, right? Because his career could burn out if he doesn't have something in place himself, right? I'm not a pop-up shop on my affirmations and my desire statements. I'm not a pop-up shop on my future and where it is that I want to go. I'm not a pop-up shop on my vision statements and my vision board. Those things will come into my life because I'm attracting them each and every day with the repetitive auto suggestions. I close my eyes. I visualize them. I see the money. It's transferring into my bank account because of my faith, my persistence, my auto suggestions. They're all there. And so, guys, we have to wake up. It says skept skepticism in connection with all new ideas is characteristics of all human beings. But if you follow the instructions outlined, your skepticism will soon be replaced by beliefs. And in this, in and this in turn will soon become crystallized in, into absolute faith. Then you will have arrived at the point where you may truly say, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Guys, we can't make all this stuff up because at the end of the day, it's like you can see the transitions in people. You can see the living proof in people. Listen, I don't know about you guys, but this group is so therapeutic for me uh, because at the end of the day, we really have to begin to start channeling our thoughts. We really have to start believing in all these things that we are saying and delete the doubt as my co-partner is saying here, because at the end of the day, you know, um, the tunnel vision, the, the song says, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the obstacles that are in my way. And so if you can begin to see the obstacles, the people that were once holding you back, the people who were once the naysayers, the situations that you've placed yourself in that you can now avoid yourself, it's clear to see. I believe even Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder would be able to see the deer coming in the headlights. And so at the end of the day, it's, it's not about, you know, channeling your energy to, um, you know, specific money, 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 money. It's all about the lifestyle that you create, what you actually desire, right? And so it says emotionalizing your beliefs. That's the fourth one. It says, when reading aloud the statement of desire through which you are endeavoring to develop a money consciousness, that mere reading of the word is of no consequence unless you mix emotion or feeling in your words. And if you repeat a million times the famous quote, day by day in every way, I am getting better and better, without mixing emotion and faith in your words, you will experience no desirable results. Your subconscious mind recognizes and acts upon only thoughts which have been well mixed with emotion or feeling. This fact of such importance as to warrant repetition in practically every chapter because the lack of understanding of this main reason is, is the main reason why majority of people who try to apply the principles of um, auto-suggestion get no desirable results. And I'm going to repeat that because I think a lot of us might have missed it. I'm going to actually highlight this. So for wave seven and eight, I could show you where it actually says this. I'm going to repeat this back because this is why we're on wave six and everyone's desire statements may still be blank. It says here, this is a fact of such importance as to warrant repetition in practically every chapter because the lack of understanding of this is the main reason the majority of people who try to apply the principle of auto-suggestion get no desired results because there's no reputation, repetition, right? We're pop-up shopping and we're not being able to balance our beliefs and emotionalize our beliefs. And so we expect instant gratification on our desire statement and so at the end of the day, as we are reading our desire statement, we have back in our subconscious that this is a bunch of crap and it's not going to work. And so because we keep telling ourselves that in the back of our mind, we're not reading with emotion, we're not reading with um, 
feeling. And so what basically ends up happening here is it's just, it's a waste of space. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy because we've lacked that and there's still doubt in our mind. And so like my co-partner says is, we have to delete, we have to spring clean, we have to get all these things out of our mind. And then I would say, what do you really want in life? Because maybe it's that you don't believe in your desire statement because you really don't believe that you want anything in life. Or maybe it's that some of you are so comfortable. I have met about five people in the last week, two male, three female, who are all comfortable in life, right? Their mortgage is paid by someone else, their bills are paid by someone else, some of them don't even know their household expenses. They're too, so at the end of the day, they, they're, they're in um, survival mode. They could care less or have any knowledge as to what it really takes to run a household so they're comfortable. And so what ends up happening is the minute that that money or that shelter or that food is pulled from under you, you'll have no use because you're just so used to somebody else doing it for you. Guys, it's time to wake up. It's 2019 in a couple of days. And we're still living and doing the same crap that we were doing years before and singing the same song and dance that at the end of the day, um, nothing works. God gave us five senses. There's a sixth sense. We'll get to that in later chapters. We have to be careful what we watch, what we say, what we smell, okay, and what we hear and what we put into our minds. And so while I might be reading and listening to Lester and Patricia read these chapters, I've, I've got audiobooks, or I'm listening to people like Les Brown, Byron Nelson, uh, Bob Proctor, Oprah. I'm listening to many different people through, uh, or podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Those get played throughout the day as I'm working or before I'm going into a, a coaching call or something of that nature because I'm guarding my thoughts. I'm consistently guarding my thoughts. And at one point this week, I slipped up and I allowed for a negative person to be in my space. And when I saw that it was starting to eat into my energy, I had to put a stop to it because I was like, mm -mm, this energy is not good for me. And literally, it got me um, so uncomfortable that I was just like, okay, I got to figure out a solution for this person. And so at the end of the day, guys, you're going to be able to watch it coming at you. You're going to be able to start feeling these things and you'll be able to take a fire extinguisher or if it's a, if it's a pest in your life, you'll be able to be your own terminator and go ahead and exterminate these roaches out of your life, right? So it says here, the affirmative statements, find one that excites you the most. And I put a sample in our PDF guide to success, which is on page... 20 we're going to go through that at the end of the of the end of i was going to say at the end of the class i feel like i'm teaching tonight uh at the end of this uh live okay um beginning today until your definite day repeat this affirmative statement 100 times each day in the beginning of the statement it, it may sound like you're a mechanical uh, per mechanically repeating words but if you persist you will find your feelings will become engaged and they are no longer words on a page, but rather they become your words emerging from uh, your very being. As you repeat the statement, make sure you breathe and try to feel the words coming deep from within you. Say them this way, plant your feet on the ground, be aware of your posture and your stance and begin to speak these words aloud forcefully and powerfully until you begin to feel the strength of the believing of them. Give me one second, guys. All right. So here is what you're going to say a hundred times per day. And what I found was easy for this to, to be was I just printed it on a sheet of paper for me to be able to say, and on the mirror, I actually wrote on it as well. And so it says here, I am open to receive all of life's riches. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Every day in every way, I open new doors in my life. Day by day, in every way, I am getting better and better. I am prosperous. I say yes to life. And life says yes to me. Everything I touch turns to gold. And so at the end of the day, guys, 
what you will do is you'll start to repeat this or record it once and have it on repeat in the morning. As you're getting dressed, as you're driving in the car, have your own voice ministering this to you. And at the end of the day, a hundred times per day for you to be able to understand this so that it becomes conviction. It says here, wisdom and cleverness alone will not attract and retain money except in a few rare instances where the laws of average favors the attraction of money through these sources. The method of attracting money described here does not depend on the law of averages. Moreover, the method plays no favorites. It will work for the one person as effectively as it will for another. Where failure is experienced, where failure is experienced, it is the individual, not the method. And that's why it was so hard to read. I'm going to highlight this. Where failure is experienced, it is not the individual. It's the individual, not the method, which has failed. If you try and fail, make another effort and still another until you succeed. Your ability to use the principle of auto-suggestion will depend very largely upon your capacity to concentrate on a given desire until that desire becomes a burning obsession. And so for all of you that are struggling with this, I just always say, like, you know, treat this like a newfound love. Treat this like a newfound love. You see that guy that you like? It is physical attraction in the beginning, honey. You see that woman that you like? It is physical attraction. And what happens is you, you are so infatuated that you try to get noticed by this person. Or like a new relationship, you are on the phone every single night. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. But you're calling each other, texting each other. You're doing all this stuff. Fall in love with your affirmative statements. Fall in love with your desire statements. Put that emotion in it. Fall in love with it the way that you would a new relationship and get your auto suggestions said day in and day out and watch what and see what's going to happen for you. And so it talks a little bit in this chapter about concentration and visualization. It says the subconscious mind takes any orders given in a spirit of absolute faith and acts upon those orders, although the orders often have to be presented over and over again through repetition before they are interpreted, in, interpreted by the subconscious mind. Fix in your own mind the exact amount of money you desire. Hold your thoughts and that amount of money by concentration or fixation of attention with your eyes closed until you can actually see the physical appearance of the money. Do this at least once each day as you see yourself actually in possession of the money. So last round, I made this a $1 million bill. Okay? Now I'm going to take another one, which I already have. My daughter didn't already take it up. And I'm going to make that one. Got them all here. Even if I have to do like 10 of these and make them $10 million. So they're in my wallet, right? I'm going to have 10 of them to make $10 million. And then I have a, a shadow box that I'm going to start to put them in. And so everybody's got to create their own uh, power of visualization. These are just the things that I do for myself. And so it says here, consider the possibility of playing a perfectly legitimate trick on your subconscious mind by making it believe, because you believe it, that you must have that amount of money you are visualizing and that this money is already awaiting your claim. And so we're going to give you a statement that will be able to help you with that. And so it says, go into a quiet spot. I say, like the book, uh, preferably in your bed right before you go to sleep at night, where you will not be disturbed or interrupted. Close your eyes and repeat aloud. So you may hear your own words or record it. Have your iPod so close to you that all you need to do is record yourself. For those of you that are struggling with this, and all you do is before bed, just go like this to your own voice, your own subconscious, okay? And you're going to repeat your statement. Um, 
of what you intend to accumulate, the time limit for its accumulation, and a description of the service or merchandise you intend to give in return for the money. As you carry out these instructions, see yourself already in possession of the money. For example, suppose you intend to accumulate $50,000 by the 1st of January, five years hence, and that is you intend to give personal services in return for the money in the capacity of a salesman, your written statement could be as this. So it goes like this. By the first day of January 2025, I will have in my possession $50,000, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best quality of service in the capacity of the salesman of my real estate services. I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now waiting transfer to me at the time and in the proportion that I deliver the service I intend to render in return for it. I am awaiting a plan by which to accumulate this money and I will follow that plan when it is received. And you're gonna repeat this program morning and night until you can see in your imagination the money you intend to, uh, to accumulate and place a written copy of your statement where you can see it morning and night and read it aloud just before retiring and arising until it has been memorized. And so that is how you're gonna be able to start seeing things, okay? And so, guys, that is, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what we do with this statement thereafter. And as you're saying this statement, if closing your eyes, you can't actually visualize it, we're gonna show you in here how you can actually make your own visuals to allow this to become a reality. And so, um, the visualization statement is on page 23 of the PDF Guide to Success. And so that is where you'll be able to pencil in your stuff and fill in the blanks so that you have this that you can print on your wall and be able to use it. And then what will end up happening from there is we'll show you how to go ahead and what you'll need to do if you're having problems closing your eyes and seeing it. And I just want to say to you guys, this, this, this chapter has got me more pumped than I think now this might be my new best chapter because I now have absorbed the powerfulness of this subconscious because I've experienced regression. I have experienced regression. And so with the repetitiveness of the auto suggestions, listening to um, audio books, listening to various podcasts and things, I felt the regression, but by doing this and putting back things into my my one of my fifth senses, I'm able to get back on track. And so we're gonna close out the night, guys. If you guys have any questions or concerns, again, you can reach out to us. Go ahead, jump online right now. Get your copy of the PDF Guide to Success. Lester has just posted the link. I want you guys to understand that a lot of us, we may be delayed, but we are not denied our destiny. We are the only ones who place our limitations on our lives. You know, uh, that song by um, Whitney Houston and by Mariah Carey, it says, um, you can, you, you, there can be miracles when you believe. The hope is frail. Somehow you will, right? And so, guys, we have to learn to ignite our faith we have to be able to know that by repeating things it's not just an instant gratification and it's overnight success or it's overnight riches and for those people who get the overnight riches or who are born with it they're either unhappy or they don't have they don't haven't discovered their purpose or the money just goes and they have to start from scratch again discover your purpose get in alignment with your assignment and know that backed by faith and repetition you can understand and see the results for the power of your desire statement received. And so guys, the time is now to be awakened. I will trust and hear the voice of my inner spirit. I will remain positive at all times. I will commit to the power and the belief of my desire statement because I create my life. 
I set my standards and I am full of infinite possibilities. I am persistent, I am powerful. I am wealthy, I am healthy. I am humble, I am strong. I am confident, I am beautiful. I am determined, I am successful. I am faithful, I am happy. I am committed, I am persistent. I am dedicated and I am consistent. And everything I touch turns to profits. And I believe relentlessly that I am in alignment with my assignment. And all the images that I see will manifest easily and effortlessly day by day because it's my season. It's my turn. I am worthy. I am relevant. I am on fire. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. I am in full awareness and I wake up each and every day living and working in my purpose. I am Natalie Cousins on behalf of my co-partners in the group, Mr. Lester Bailey, Patricia Lynn Stokes, Gordon Soap, as well as, as well as all of the group members here tonight. We are the world's greatest gift. And so guys, I want to thank you guys so much for your time tonight. Let's rock this affirmations and these desire statements out the park. The time is now to get motivated, dedicated, and consistent with whatever it is that we want in life. I Natalie Cousins, we will see you guys tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have an awesome and amazing night. Bye for now.